Okay, welcome to uh, part four of our key stage three look at uh, energy. Okay, so, uh, so we're just over halfway through these lectures now. Uh, we've had a look at our basic types of energy, our energy transfer diagrams, and um, our heat and temperature. Today we're going to have a little focus on thermal energy transfer. So, so natural progression move on from heat and temperature. So thermal energy transfer, what is this? So there's three main types of thermal energy transfer. Uh, one is called conduction, one is called convection, and the other one is radiation. So what we're going to do now is we're going to have a look at each one of these three and see if we can make things a little bit more easier to understand. So conduction. Now, conduction happens in solids. So, as we were talking about in lesson one, uh, with this diagram, uh, we were talking about uh, chemical potential energy. So, what we have here, we have, a, we have a candle, which has had a small amount of energy placed into it. In this case, it would have come from a match, um, so a small bit of fire. So, this fire here so itself is giving off thermal energy, which is unlocking the potential chemical energy within the candle. Here, we have... For example, we'd call it we call it a piece of metal, just a piece of metal that we're holding into the flame. Now, this thermal energy transfer that occurs in solids is called conduction. So, what's actually happening here? So, in our metal, it's made up of very small, very tightly packed atoms of that metal. And what happens is when they start to heat up, as this thermal energy is transferred onto them, they start to vibrate. And as they vibrate, they start to vibrate and hit the other atoms along the side of them. Now, as they hit and as they vibrate again next to each other, the thermal energy is passed on. So therefore, you know, their, 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 their heat increases. Um, sorry, the heat energy within it increases and the temperature itself increases as well. So what actually happens is that with continued heat at one end, these atoms vibrate more violently and they vibrate against the others and then they vibrate against the others and it starts to stretch out across the whole of this piece of metal. So what would actually happen is that you would have a very, very high temperature just where the heat source is, where your, where your flame is and over a length of time you would actually find that the temperature would increase across the entirety of this metal and this is all due to do the vibration of the atoms and as they hit each other, just transferring that thermal energy. Um, th that exactly is conduction. Okay? Now this, as I said, only happens in solids. And it most of all happens within metals. Okay? Now, this leads us on to have a quick, just a quick discussion, a quick example of what conductors are and what insulators are. Now this is all to do with conduction. So, as I said, metals, in this case a spoon, is it, it's a very, very, very good conductor. This is because the, the, the atoms are so tightly packed to each other that when you heat it or when you add thermal energy to it, it transfers that energy across to it very quickly um, and very efficiently as well. So this is if you ever have a cup of tea, I know I've said cup of tea again already, but I, I love my tea, but if you leave your spoon in your cup of tea for too long, when you try to pick the spoon back out again, it will be hot. And that's all because of conduction. Now, insulators are basically materials that don't conduct thermal energy well. Um, so a good example of that would be air or it would be plastic. So, you know, if you, again, get a cup of tea, you can have a polystyrene cup. That's, it's cold to have, you could, it's, it's not hot enough on the outside that you're going to burn yourself when you hold it but it still keeps the, the liquid inside it hot as well because that thermal energy is, is not being lost from the liquid inside it to its surroundings. Whereas with metal, it's taking that heat away. It's taking that thermal energy away and spreading it across amongst itself. So that's the difference between conductors and insulators. So then we'll move on to convection now. Convection occurs in gases and in liquids. Okay. Now, what basically happens here is that you have a thermal energy source. So, say for example, it's a radiator. So what you do is you have your gas, in this case air, and what will happen is that near that energy source, through convection, 
the thermal energy will be transferred to those gas molecules, those air molecules. What happens is they, they, they take that energy on and they get more excited. This means that they move around faster and naturally heat rises. So as those molecules rise, what they actually do is replace the cooler, colder, slower moving molecules that are at the top. Now in order for them to actually have got there, they need to have used up some of that thermal energy that they actually have. So what actually happens is that they get really, really warm and they shoot up and they rise up and they replace the colder, slower moving molecules at the top. But as I said, they've used their energy to get there. So what they've actually done is they've actually started to cool down. So then themselves actually come back down again. Now this is exactly the same as what happens in water. So whenever you boil a saucepan of water or you boil any water, the molecules that are colder will sink down to the bottom. They'll receive this heat source from the bottom and shoot back up again with energy. But as again they do that, they use that energy and they start to cool back down again and slow back down and drop back down to our, our, our thermal energy source. Now this is called convection and this circular movement, this circular movement is called, are called convection currents. This is how wind, how we have wind on our planet is due to do with the heat from the sun and how it slows down and heats, and, and heats up the molecules within uh, within our air, but we will have a look at that in uh, our next lesson on uh, renewable resources through wind turbines. But don't worry about that just for now, that will be in the next lesson. So that's convection. Finally, we're going to have a look at radiation. Now, radiation, unlike conduction and convection, doesn't rely on the movement of particles or molecules in a gas or in a liquid or in a solid. This basically means that it can happen in space. And this is exactly how we get our heat and we get our, from the sun. It's from these things that are called infrared radiation. As I said, this is exactly how we get our energy from the sun because it does not rely on the movement or the heating of molecules. It's purely just called infrared radiation. So yeah. That's the only thing that would ever happen in space. Radiation can happen in space because there's no air. But convection on conduction could not happen because there is no air in space. So our overview, here's our little picture that's got all three of the things that we're looking at. Okay? So radiation doesn't just come from the sun, it can come from fire. You know, everything can emit radiation. If it's hot enough, anything that is warm will emit infrared radiation. But the hotter it is, the more infrared radiation it will give off. Okay? So here we have our fire, which is emitting our radiation. So that itself will start to heat up our metal saucepan in this case, which is through conduction. Okay? And then inside we have our convection currents of our liquid that are heating up and going, heating up and rising and cooling and coming back down again. And this is our constant cycle of thermal energy which is causing our convection currents in our water and the heat energy which through conduction is exciting those molecules and making the heat conduct itself all the way around the metal. So again, that was our view, uh, our look at the different types of thermal energy transfer. Um, I hope that helps and I hope you come back to our other lessons. Uh, my name is Ian McDowell, I'm a student from Brighton University.